Hi there, Robin here from Expert On. Today we're gonna to be talking about this. This is a portable powered mixer. Yes, a portable powered mixer. And why do we call it a portable powered mixer? Because, well, it's got a handle on top of it. It's got an amplifier inside of it. And it's got an entire mixing board built into the front of it. Now this particular one happens to be from Pile. So it's a consumer pro audio piece. So the consumer part means it's for everybody at home to use. The pro audio piece means it's I want to make my own music. I want something to talk to, something to play with. That's what's going on. That's the difference between this and buying a home stereo system or just a boom box. So nice thing about this guy is it's pretty much the same as a lot of other pieces out there, which include a bunch of consumer, uh, sorry, commercial products and consumer products. So the manual on this particular series is actually really good uh, because it actually talks in easy terms. But today what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go through what the features are on the front of the unit. But more importantly, why did I bring all these extra cables to the table today and so many microphones is to actually show you how the differences between the plugs on the front of this unit work and how much difference you're gonna get using the right connection for your microphones, for your audio equipment, how can you hook up some extra equipment to it? And what are all the extra features? Like there is reverb, which better known as popular sense, either echo or repeat or delay, that sort of thing. It's built into here and we're gonna cover some of those features as well. So off the hop, what we're gonna do is talk about microphones. So it is an eight channel. This is a big mixer. It's got eight channels going into it. Each one is a single channel. So each one's gonna have a quarter inch and an XLR. Sorry, I pointed this one. Each one's gonna have a quarter inch and an XLR on the unit. And from there, we're also gonna have over to the ends, we've got some RCA options. And there's also even a 3.5 on this particular model. This model here happens to cover two uh, versions of this product, which is the PMX802M and the PMX840BT. Now the difference is, is as the BT calls out, that model there, probably about $20 more, has a Bluetooth option to it. So if you need Bluetooth, that's the one you're gonna look for. We'll have the links for that all down below. We'll have all the descriptions for it all down below and where you can buy it either from us in Canada or we'll have links to Amazon for the US. So there we go. We'll keep going with the unit. So this will cover everything. Now, again, I said I had two microphones plugged into this unit and we did plug them in in the first two channels. And to be fair, I've got a PGA 48 and that is hooked up with an XLR cable. And we also hooked up a PGA 58, both from Shure. That one's hooked up with a quarter inch cable. That's real important because occasionally, depending on where you buy it, you might've gotten the wrong cable with it or no cable at all. So now you have to make the choice or you already have it. And maybe you were using it on a PA speaker that had uh, a mic input that had both quarter inch and XLR just for the microphone. And that's fine. But on a mixer and specifically on a mixer like this, you've got to be particular about which cable you use where. And we'll demonstrate that. So before we go through all the buttons, we'll just show what we're going to be talking about today. And that's going to be how to hook it up. So I've got my master volume at the end set up at 12 o'clock. And I'm going to have my first and second microphones both set at 75%. And when we're doing a good job, it should sound like this. And when we have the wrong cable, it's going to sound like this. Here's one microphone. Here's the other microphone. And the only differences were the cables. So again, if I come over here and just turn the master volume down for a second, unplug the two of them, move them around. Now we've, well, we gotta turn that master volume back up, bring that master volume back up. And there we go. So now the 58 sounds way louder and the 48, well, we can hardly hear it at all. So those are the type of things we're gonna be talking about today, how to get all that to work. So what we'll do first is we'll cover the features on the front of it, and then we'll go through all the different types of cables and let's say a wireless microphone receivers that you might wanna hook up to it and how to get that job done. So right off the hop, again, like I said, it's an eight channel in this particular case, this does come in a six and a four, but so we have all eight, four across the top, four across the bottom. And if we make reference to one of them, which will cover all the other ones, we're gonna have four knobs per. And in this case, we've got an effects, which is in relationship to what they like to call their echo and delay. 
So this is all part of the reverb package. Uh, reverb is basically two words in one, it's, or an ex abbreviated version of reverberation. And if you want to get complicated, it's uh, reverb. So basically echo is the short part. Uh, echo is the uh, reverberation, sorry, and the re is the how often it gets repeated. So uh, reverberation would be echo, 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 echo. So just to play it out in real terminology. Anyways, everybody likes to talk about those type of things, but that's what's going on here and that's what we have the controls for. Now, because they've digitally laid it out, it has a subtle delay, which is what it's supposed to do. And then it allows us a variable gain. And that's again, these three white knobs in this case down here, how loud do I want it? And how much echo in this case do I want? And how much repeat to that echo I want to add to it? So each mic has its own ability to have as little or as much. So if somebody wants a lot of echo because you're using it for karaoke, turn it up real high on the effects on that channel. And then the other person only wants a little bit, so turn it up a little bit. But at the end of the day, you're going to decide what your recipe is going to be down here. So you can dial those in. If you're not sure and you're going, how do I set it up? Well, you start off by putting these three white knobs at 12 o'clock. If you do that, then you're at least gonna have 50% of it turned on in the same thing here. When I unpack one of these units, first thing I like to do is take the blue knobs, which are the bass and treble controls, put them all at 12 o'clock, turn the effects down to zero, turn the gain, which is the red knob, down to zero. So this way, if I've done that across the whole board, it's not something I have to remember to do or not do. Now, the idea of keeping the gain down on mics you're not using or input lines you're not using is so you're not adding any more extra noise to the system. Every time you turn one of these up and leave it up full blast and you don't have anything plugged into it, it's going to add that little hissy in the background. So turn them down if you're not using them. It'll all sound better. We've covered all these. Again, two jacks, and they do go out of their way to make sure there is a tiny little word written next to each XLR which says mic input with a little line pointing to the XLR underneath the quarter inch, there is a line input directly underneath. So if it's not a microphone, it's a line input. If it's a microphone, be it wireless or wired, it definitely has to go into the three pin XLR. Everything else can go into the quarter inch jack right beside it. Now I did check the manual. These are balanced and unbalanced connections. So depending on the type of cables you have, you'll be fine either way. You don't have to run out and buy new ones. But I say this, if you're hooking up wireless equipment to it, it's probably best to have an unbalanced cable to quarter inch if you need an adapter. So just makes the adapters easier to use. And we'll talk about that in a second, but that's probably the only time you need to look out for it. On the side, we have on this particular model, now depending on which brand you buy, it may not or may, but this particular model has an MP3 player built into it, which is right up here and that'll give us a separate volume control. They like to call it the USB uh, volume, which refers to this guy, and that's located here, and then we have a master volume. Now, because we have the ability to plug something in externally to this unit, right here, uh, we've got an in and an out on RCA jacks. We'll be able to do two things with these RCA jacks. One, we can use to plug something into it. So let's say I have a laptop, and I want to plug it in, my laptop's going to have a quarter inch jack for the laptop itself. This particular cable, I made sure I went and got myself one that has a 3.5, sorry, a 3.5 millimeter for the laptop and RCAs. And this is now going to allow me to plug into where it says in. So I just look over here, find the input. I plug into there, no problem. I have now plugged into that and I can now plug into my laptop. Now, the output can be used depending on the speakers. Now, this is an amplified mixer. So this means the outputs in the back are supposed to go to passive speakers. Those are speakers with out amplifiers on. So real popular if you already have an existing system to go out and buy one of these uh, because you're just, you just you want to keep what you have and you just want to get something new that's working that's going to do the job for you. So that's why you could use the RCAs is because maybe you also have amplified speakers or one of your friends come over and they bring over their speakers and they are amplified, you can plug in from there to the amplifier, take advantage of the entire mixer, and it'll come out of those RCAs at the very end. So there you go. That's for hooking it up. And again, that could have been a home system, which I don't necessarily recommend because they're not built for that. But uh, anytime you have any type of connection like that. Now, 
You may need adapters, by the way. So you may be coming out of there with RCAs and at the other end. So if I went RCA from here on the output and I had a set of, we'll just you know say anything. We have uh, Electro Voice, Mackie, Alto, whatever you have, Yorkville, it doesn't matter. You may need adapters, either a quarter inch in this case, or maybe you have an XLR adapter three pin. Depends on the speaker, but you may need that to make that all happen. So again, I'll unplug that from here, put that aside. Now cables come in a lot of variations. Uh, if you want to plug in, let's say your laptop or let's say a phone or anything, you want to have some bass and trouble control beside the five band EQ, which is built in, which is very nice. Uh, you can get one that has quarter inch connectors and that'll allow you to plug into here. So again, if I made sure my gains were down, which they are, I can plug one in here, one in here, and I can plug this into my phone, my tablet, my laptop, anything that has a 3.5 and plug it in here and we're off to the races. And the added advantage here is, remember the blue knobs are based in trouble control for this particular channel right here. So same thing happens here, same thing happens here. And that happens eight times over across the whole board. Now, the reason why I would say plug things in here is this allows you to adjust the sound quality of what's coming into it. So I can tweak the bass and trouble here for let's say my laptop. Now, so you say, well, I have a five band EQ right off to the side. Why can't I just adjust it here? So like I said, if I'm using these bass and troubles to adjust the inputs for let's say microphones or my laptop and any other equipment I have plugged in, I'm going to want to adjust the sound quality of the speakers I have plugged in. And that's what I can do here. So this acts as a complete blanket of everything I've plugged in and allows me to adjust the highs, mids and lows for the actual speakers. So the overall sound coming out is going to be just the way I want it to be. So that's what's going on here. So good advantages to have either way, but I definitely think if you can go this way, plug things in and then utilize the actual EQ for the speakers and then take advantage of the bass and treble controls for your inputs, you're going to really enjoy the sound you're playing. It also helps if you've adjusted everything here, including your microphones, that if you have any feedback on the microphones, you can simply use the EQ to try and find where that feedback is, particularly in what you're listening to, or sorry, talking and the environment you're in. Uh, it's gonna vary. So it's usually gonna be in the middle three. And by turning it down a little or turning it up a little bit, you'll either find the feedback problem and then you'll be able to pull back a little bit and remove that feedback problem. It doesn't fix everybody all the time, but it definitely is a great way to not sacrifice uh, volume because of feedback. So give that a try, you might find it kind of handy. Now other adapters that are good to have are these guys here. Since we've been talking about trying to plug everything in up here, if you unplug these guys and you go, well, all I have at home right now are RCA cables. How do I do that? Well, basically you just use an adapter, which is a quarter inch RCA, plug that in here. And now you've converted these quarter inch into RCAs, allowing you to plug in the RCAs are right in on top here, giving you all the advantages and everything you need to do. So that's why you'd look at these adapters. Again, I'll put the links to the cables and the adapters all down below to help you find them. So this way you have proper descriptions on all of that. So again, when I started this video, the first thing I did was actually use the microphones. So if I turn up the volume a bit here, there we go. I've got the volume up. If I want to use the effects, this is the important part. I dial up how much effects I want for the particular microphone I'm on, which happens to be here. And we're going to exaggerate a little bit. So this way we get it all coming out of the speaker. And there we go. So I brought that up 100% for the effects. And we've added 100% echo and 100% delay. And we'll turn this up and make it really big. So there we go. So that's how the overall effects work. Now remember the other half of this conversation was really making sure we've got the right cable connected. So again, I turn down the gain on this line. I want to make sure I have a three. Now that's great. I've made sure that. I also want to make sure that my wireless microphones do the same thing for me. So I've got one wireless system here, which happens to have both a quarter inch and an XLR. So we've got our XLR three pin and our quarter inch off to the side. 
Now that's good because now all I need to do is take my XLR cable and plug that into the back and I'm all set up here. This is great, nice and easy. But what happens if my wireless is built like this one, which only has a quarter inch on the back? Well, there's two solutions, but the easiest one is to get the proper cable that's automatically gonna make that happen. And that's this cable here. So this cable is a quarter inch TR cable, which basically means it's unbalanced or mono if you're used to seeing headphone cables like this. Uh, so that means just 1.1 ground. And then we've got our three pin XLR. Now, what does this allow me to do? It allows me to come in here, plug straight into my mic input, just the way I'm supposed to. And this end of the cable will now plug into here. So this is important because you're probably gonna have to get this cable. These cables are not included. This is an extra cable for this particular type of system. Usually when you buy a wireless system, the free cable in the box is always quarter inch. TR to TR, that's what you're gonna get when you buy a wireless system. It's rare that you'll ever get an XLR cable in the system with it. They're going to assume it's like buying a computer, then going out and buying a printer. You're gonna have to buy your own cable. So in this case, you have to look at the equipment you have and the wireless microphone you bought and make sure you get the right cable. Trust me, a lot of people get a lot of excitement because all they do is change one simple cable and everything comes alive and they're really, really happy. So uh, this is a normal problem to have and that's how you fix it. So outside of that, talking about the actual, this particular product itself as a whole, the 802M or the 840BT, they're both awesome products if you're looking for garage band uh, if you've got a uh, small rec center and you're just looking for something for talk uh, or background music uh, for bingo for uh, a band in a basement for karaoke's at home for karaoke's out of friends house uh, all these things are absolutely awesome i would not dj with this i would not hold a wedding service uh, the talking part yes and uh, not the actual music party part so there you go. A lot of times people are looking at this. If you don't have a set of speakers and you're looking at that, maybe you might look at a mixer having different pieces. Uh, if you already have passive speakers, some non-powered speakers, and you're looking at replacing it or needing a new amp to replace, this is a great way because all in one, it's very easy to use in comparison to having to have a power amp and a mixing board on top of that. Makes it really portable because it does have that handle to go. Uh, like I said, if you need this on a big professional scale and you need it for four or 500 people and I've got monster speakers from JBL, they got it. No, no, they have like, PV's got a really big, powerful version of this. So uh, same layout, same idea, same rules apply just big and powerful. There's lots of brands out there that do that on a commercial size, but on a consumer size, probably one of the most fun pieces you can buy, I would definitely say, if you're looking for something like this and it fits within everything we've talked about. So I think we pretty much covered everything on the front of this. I'm sure there'll be tons of questions down below. We are going to, there is one little segment. Everybody wants to hear how this sounds. So the next little bit, I'm gonna take two minutes. We're gonna hike this into the back hook it up to a couple of 15 inch passive speakers, of course, and uh, we're gonna play some uh, music on it and uh, let you have a listen to it. Okay, so here we are. We've got it set up, ready to go on top of two 15s. So we've got 15 inch woofer, we've got the horn in the center, and then we've got tweeters racked across the top. We've got five of them all here. So we've got them hooked up to two speakers. Now remember, uh, always use quarter inch to quarter inch speaker cable or quarter inch to speak on whatever you have but the back of this is quarter inch and make sure it's speaker cable not guitar cable or an instrument cable that's just not going to be the right size wire and gauge to carry the load now that's one thing i haven't mentioned yet is if you're looking at this actual particular mixer uh you're looking at they advertise at 800 max now when we look in the manual it does say 800 max at four ohms uh, when we look at it, eight ohms, which is what we're driving here, we've got two times 125 watts. It is a D-class power amp, so that's like saying a diesel engine instead of a gas engine. It's got a lot of power at that 125 per speaker. Could easily run these guys or two of those, which are double 15s. So we're going to play it here. I'm only going to play about 10 seconds per song, and then we'll skip on the next one. It's all YouTube royalty-free stuff, so nobody's going to get in trouble. And for the volume level, 
I've got the volume, the preamp level for the MP3 player, the USB. It's at 50% on the pre level. And my master volume is at 50%. I'm also going to turn off my body pack and just let the uh, Marantz Pro MPM a 3000 condenser microphone pick up the audio. And just for those who want to say, well, what does that sound like? We'll unplug this from here and we'll throw it in here. Right, so you had to listen to it. I hope that sounded as good as it did here. We always try our best. Um, remember, there'll be all the links for this down below. Uh, if you've got questions, leave them down below. I try and get back to them. There's, the more videos I get out there, the more questions there are. But, you know, if I can answer, great. Uh, if I can't, other people definitely chime in. That's always good, too. So we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you haven't subscribed, now's a good time because there's definitely a palm tree on the screen. Uh, we've got some other videos, and I've added a playlist for you. Um, See you next time. Bye for now.